Hello, and welcome to Journey of Faith Worship Online. We are so glad you've joined us, and we hope you are blessed by our service. My name is Heidi Cooper, and I'm a member of Journey of Faith. Pastor Glenda Whitehead is on a well-deserved vacation this week and has gifted me with the opportunity to lead you in worship today. If you would, please take a moment to drop us a note on Facebook or YouTube to let us know that you're worshiping with us. To give God your gifts and tithes through Journey of Faith, you can use PayPal to jofumc at gmail.com or physical mail to P.O. Box 1343, Round Rock, Texas, 78680. We'll be holding an outdoor Easter egg hunt on Saturday, April 3rd at Journey of Faith. Please join us and tell your friends and family. We encourage you to share your joys and concerns on our Facebook page so we can support you with our prayers. I ask you to join me in lifting up Kevin Ray and his family following the loss of their father, Sherman Ray Sr. from COVID this week. Let's all take a centering breath and open ourselves to God. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to enter into your presence and worship you today. Thank you for your unending mercy, grace, and love. We are blessed and honored to be your children. We come to you today with our struggles, our pain, our joys, our sorrow, our thanksgiving, and our fear. We ask that you allow us to see your face and hear your voice, that we may know we are not alone in this time of isolation. We come to you today greatly divided as a country and as a world. We ask that you allow us to see you in our neighbors' faces and our neighbors' voices, that we may know that we are all your children and that we should love each other as you love us. We come to you today knowing that we regularly fall into sin and guilt. We ask that you see our faces and hear our voices, that when we cry out to you, we may know that we are fully forgiven and made clean. Lord, hear our voices as we pray the way Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
message for us today in Psalm 51 verses 1 through 12. Have mercy on me God according to your faithful love. Wipe away my wrongdoings according to your great compassion. Wash me completely clean of my guilt. Purify me from my sin. Because I know my wrongdoings, my sin is always right in front of me. I've sinned against you, you alone. I committed evil in your sight. That's why you were justified when you render your verdict, completely correct when you issue your judgment. Yes, I was born in guilt, in sin, from the moment my mother conceived me. And yes, you want truth in the most hidden places. You teach me wisdom in the most secret space. Purify me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and celebration again let the bones you crushed rejoice once more. Hide your face from my sins. Wipe away all my guilty deeds. Create a clean heart for me, God. Put a new faithful spirit deep inside me. Please don't throw me out of your presence. Please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Return the joy of your salvation to me and sustain me with a willing spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Based on what I read on Facebook, 
I suspect that I'm not the only person who's maybe gained a little bit of weight during the pandemic. Limited activities, stress, fewer exercise options, and spending too much time in close proximity to the kitchen have caused some of us to pack on a few extra pounds. This extra weight makes me feel sluggish and carrying it around all day is exhausting. Frankly, it makes me feel terrible and I wish there was a fast and easy way to get rid of it. Even if you've not personally gained weight this year, I'm sure you can imagine how hard it is to go through the day carrying, or carrying around something heavy. What starts off feeling not too bad gets heavier and heavier the longer we carry it. After a while, it feels like all we can do to just take another step and we don't have the energy to do much besides just get through the day. Things that used to bring us joy now just seem like work. I think that guilt works that way too. I have a friend that I dearly love. She is truly precious to me. She recently told me that a lot of what she does is either because of guilt or fear of guilt. She's a Christian and seeks a good relationship with God, but she doesn't seem to find much joy in her faith or actually in life itself. It seems like she just slogs through most days. I think maybe part of the reason she feels this way is that she's weighed down by a heavy load of guilt that she's been carrying around for too long. But on the other hand, guilt and fear of guilt can be positive things. Guilt can be one way the Holy Spirit teaches us. Guilt can let us know, don't do that, or you should be doing that. Fear of guilt can give us that extra nudge we might need to resist temptation. As a teaching aid or as an inspiration, guilt can be good. So maybe it's not guilt itself that's good or bad, but how we deal with it that makes the difference. Let's take another look at the psalm from today's scripture. Psalm 51 is a psalm of King David in which he specifically addresses guilt. And David should know about guilt. After all, he committed adultery with another man's wife, tries to hide it, and eventually kills the man to keep from being found out. And this from someone described as being a man after God's own heart. Surely, after all of this, David was crushed by guilt for the rest of his life, and being the Old Testament angry God we hear people talk about, surely God smote him down. But that's not what happened. Let's see why. David begins by begging God to forgive him for his sins. David clearly sees his own sin and acknowledges that God is justified in judging David for his sin. David asks for forgiveness not because David deserves it, but because it's in God's nature to be loving and compassionate. No surprise so far, we all know that God has an unending love and amazing grace. There's even a song about that. We know that God, as God's heirs, we're encouraged to leave our sins at God's altar and accept God's forgiveness for them. But then David does something that may be surprising. In addition to petitioning God to wipe away David's sins, David also asks God to wash him completely clean of his guilt. I suspect there are those of us who confess our sins, who leave our sins at God's feet, but then continue to be chained to those sins because we continue to carry guilt for those sins. Even once guilt has done the job of making us recognize our sins, even after God has forgiven us and wiped our sins out of existence, we insist on carrying that heavy weight of guilt around with us. This is like losing the pounds some of us have gained, but insisting on carrying around sandbags in its place so that we're still dragged down by excess weight. We wouldn't do that, so why do we choose to carry the weight around of excess guilt? Well, while God has extended God's incredible mercy and forgiven us, it's hard for some people to accept this forgiveness. Honestly, it is for me. If God isn't going to punish us, then we may feel like we have to punish ourselves. We know we deserve punishment, and it just doesn't feel right to be forgiven without doing something to deserve being forgiven. 
And one way to punish ourselves is by holding on to guilt. So, why is it a bad thing to continue carrying our guilt after we've been forgiven? What harm could it do? David answers that question later on in the psalm. In verse 8, David says, Let me hear joy and celebration again. Let the bones you crushed rejoice once more. David's sin and guilt weigh so heavily on him that not only can he no longer experience joy and celebration, he can't even hear them. David acknowledges that it was God who has crushed him with guilt as a result of David's sin. And this is a good thing. As guilt has caused David to acknowledge his sin, guilt has caused David to see that he has done evil in God's sight, and guilt has caused David to come to God in repentance to beg for forgiveness. But now that he's done all that, David knows that God will extend God's loving mercy to wipe away David's sins and completely clean him of his guilt. I'm going to say that again, and I want you to listen to the wording. God's loving mercy will wipe away David's sins and completely clean him of his guilt. God doesn't ignore our sins. God doesn't just pretend we aren't guilty. God wipes away our sins. God cleans us of our guilt. Our sin is gone. There is no longer anything to feel guilty about. In our penal system, someone convicted of a felony may do jail time. This prison time can be seen either as punishing them for their wrongdoings or rehabilitating them or both. When they are released from prison, however, even if we say they're rehabilitated, they remain a felon they're still considered guilty for the crime they've committed. There are still things that they're required to do or barred from doing because they were found guilty. They've been released. They may have even been forgiven, but they remain guilty. But listen to how David tells us that God does things differently. David asked God to create in him a clean heart and put a new faithful spirit deep inside him. In the Old Testament, the word for create used here is only used for God's actions. Only God can truly create. We only have the ability to clean the surface of things that have become dirty, but we can't change the fact that they were once dirty. God is the creator and can literally recreate us so that we are totally clean and, in fact, are brand new. This is reminiscent of a verse in Ezekiel that Pastor Glenda mentioned last week, where God promises to give Israel a new heart and a new spirit. God promises to remove the stony hearts from their bodies and replace them with living ones. God's love is so deep and God's power is so great that God will truly give us a new and clean heart. Or as the New Interpreter's Bible Commentary puts it, the reality of God's steadfast love is more fundamental than the reality of human sinfulness. As heirs of God, we can ask for the cosmic do-over, and God will again make us as clean as we were in the moment of our salvation, so that we can rejoice in it again. There is no reason to continue carrying a heavy burden of guilt because the guilty party no longer exists. Finally, David requests God sustain him with a willing spirit. I find it interesting that we don't require a rock-solid spirit or an unwavering spirit or even a mighty spirit to sustain us, only a willing one. Willing just means ready, eager, or accepted by choice and without reluctance. And we don't even have to provide a willing spirit through our own efforts. As David did, we can ask God to provide us with a willing spirit. All we have to do is the asking. So, if you're carrying a heavy burden of guilt, I invite you to stop. When guilt has forced you to face and acknowledge your sin, when guilt has convicted you, when guilt has driven you to confess your sin and beg God for forgiveness and beg to be made clean again, then guilt's work is done and there's no reason to carry it another step. What you did wrong has been erased and you have been made new. 
God has given you a clean heart and a new spirit, and that guilt no longer belongs to you. Put down your guilt and rediscover the joy and celebration of your salvation. Put the pep back in your spiritual journey that could be there without the extra weight of all this unnecessary guilt. If, however, you're carrying extra pandemic weight, then you're on your own. Thanks be to God. Amen. All I could see was the struggle Haunted by ghosts that lived in my past Bound up in shackles of all my failures It's gonna last Then you look at this prisoner And say to me, son Stop fighting a fight that's already been won I am redeemed You said I'll shake off these heavy chains Wipe away every stain I'm not who I used to be I am redeemed I am redeemed I am redeemed All my life I've been called on of my shame and regret But when I hear you whisper Child, lift up your head I remember, oh God, you're not done with me yet I am redeemed You set me free So I'll shake off these heavy chains Wipe away every stain I'm not who I used to be I am redeemed I am redeemed I don't have to be the old man inside of me Cause his day is long dead and gone Because I've got a new name, a new life I'm not the same and a hope that will carry me home I am redeemed You set me free So I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain. I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed. You set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain. I'm not who I used to be.
where you have guilt for sins you have not yet confessed before God and are not yet forgiven, go forth and listen to this guilt as it leads you to God's mercy. Where you have guilt for sins that you have already confessed before God and received forgiveness, lay down your guilt and go forth in joy and celebration that your sins have been wiped out and you have been made new. <laughs>